Hello and welcome to this first video posted to our new American Lutheran Church YouTube channel, LPC American Lutheran Church. These are very trying times that we find ourselves in the midst of, and I'm seated in the sanctuary of American Lutheran Church where before long we would be welcoming many people, members, visitors, and guests to worship this Wednesday, March 18th, as a part of our Lenten journey to the cross of Christ. We are following the guidelines set forth by the County Health Department, the CDC, and our government officials uh, very closely. So we will not be gathering tonight for worship. And I need to be honest, that grieves me. I miss you. This is not the way that the church functions. We are people who gather together. And one of the suggestions that we have received is social distancing. You've probably heard that phrase already. Well, we as Christians are not good at social distancing. We are one in the body of Christ. We share signs of peace with one another. We shake hands, we hug, we sit next to each other. We dwell with one another in our joys and in our times of challenge. So instead of social distancing, I would recommend using the phrase physical distancing. That's what we're exploring now as we share video messages, devotions, and prayers in these next coming days, weeks, or however long this, um, this situation with the COVID-19 virus may, um, may exist. So I appreciate your flexibility, and I appreciate the opportunity to share a message with you tonight. I mentioned in the announcements on Sunday morning when we gathered together uh, that my primary message to you is this, do not be afraid. 365 times throughout scripture, this is a message that has been given to God's people. These are challenging times. These restrictions are incredibly difficult for us to follow, but uh, I ask you to please do not be afraid. We are in this together and Christ is by our side. And very soon, we will be worshiping together again, side by side. I'd like to share with you the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. As for yourselves, beware, for they will hand you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them. And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but whatever is given you at the time. For it is not what you speak, or you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Here ends the Gospel. I remember when I was young, uh, the very first time that I visited the Sears Tower in Chicago. I'd been to Chicago before, but I had not been up close and personal to the Sears Tower itself. I'd only ever seen it off in the distance as a part of the skyline. And it was amazing to stand at the base of such an impressive building to look straight up and to imagine the marvel of engineering that uh, took place in order to create such a building as that. 
And even better, my parents uh, paid the admission fee for us to go to the, uh, vis the viewing deck at the very top. And I remember it was a couple of different elevators we had to take, and it seemed like it took forever for us to get to the very top of this building. And once we were up there, we were surrounded by others who were in amazement of the view of the city of Chicago and surrounding areas, Lake Michigan, from this observation deck. It was beautiful. It was amazing. I think that's what's happening in today's gospel reading from Mark. The disciples were so amazed by the sight of grandeur, the sight of such magnificence at the, at the hands of human beings, that they were looking in the wrong place and they lost sight of the one standing right in front of them. And I think that happens often for most of us as human beings. It's, it's human nature. We are excited about the bigger, the better things in life, whether it's wealth, whether it's status symbols. We're intrigued by things that are larger than life or larger than what we would imagine even being possible. And Jesus reminds his disciples that this is not the end goal. That the large stones that were put in place to construct the temple in Jerusalem was not the end. It was simply a building. And buildings are constructed and buildings are torn down. But the love that we find in Jesus Christ remains. And Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body as well, that his, he knew his life would end. He knew that the temple of his body would be destroyed by the power of death, but also that death would not have the final word and that he would rise triumphantly that glorious Easter morning that all might have life in his name. What are the large stones in your life? that distract you from your life in Christ. For me, I have to admit that this coronavirus, the news reports, following uh, guidelines that seem to be updated day by day, if not hour by hour, that is a large stone in my life currently. I can't help but look at it and be distracted by it. Christ calls us to something larger. Christ calls us to life together, even if that is by video or by holding each other in unity through prayer during this time. There will always be distractions. There will always be things that try to take our focus away from Christ who is in our midst. But we as Christians will not allow that. We as Christians will continue to love and support one another and worship our God together, even if it requires creativity during this time. Because he alone is the foundation of our life and the foundation of our faith. And nothing, no power, no influence, no authority, no illness, will ever take away from that firm foundation we have in Christ. I'd like to share with you the words to hymn number 796 in our ELW. The hymn is called How Firm a Foundation. And we do have extended licensing for online streaming of um, meditations, devotions, and worship services. But I did check, too, that this is a public domain hymn. So there won't be any issues for me to share the words with you. There are four verses. How firm a foundation, O saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in Christ Jesus the Word. What more can he say than to you he has said, who unto the Savior for refuge have fled? Fear not, I am with you, O be not dismayed, for I am your God and will still give you aid. I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand, upheld by my righteousness, omnipotent hand. 
When through fiery trials your pathway shall lie, my grace, all sufficient, shall be your supply. The flames shall not hurt you, I only design your dross to consume and your gold to refine. Throughout all their lifetime, my people shall prove my sovereign, eternal, unchangeable love. And then when gray hairs shall their temples adorn, like lambs, they shall still in my bosom be born. Please join me in a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we come before you as your people gathered this day, gathered from our homes or from our places of work, not in the way that we wish to be gathered, but in the way to help to preserve the safety and the health of our community. Bless all who are struggling with anxiety or fear of the illness of COVID-19. Bless all who are facing loneliness or so social isolation. And remind us of your presence and call us to action to be your presence and your voice and your action in this world for the sake of others. Be with us this night. Grant us good rest and bring us back together safely when all of this has subsided and we are able to return to more normal aspects of life. All of this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, I ask for you to remember your financial commitment to the church as well. You are welcome to send offerings to our church office. We are maintaining regular office hours at this time, but they may be subject to change in the coming days or weeks. Also, uh, please indicate whether you'd like that to go to Benevolence to help support our partners in ministry, whether that is Camp Iwalu, Lutheran Services in Iowa, or the Synod of uh, Northeastern Iowa. Or if you'd like your offering to be designated for the current fund or the building fund as well. We are currently working on finding an online giving platform. As soon as information about that becomes more available, I will share that on social media as well. But in the meantime, continue to wash your hands, continue to be safe, practice physical distancing but not social distancing, check in on your neighbors, and never hesitate to call the church office or me directly on my cell phone for meaningful conversation or prayer during this time. My role, my capacity as your pastor does not change with this modification to our worship and activity schedule. The role of our church council does not change in administering and stewarding the ministry of our congregation. On behalf of all of us, we ask you to hold us in your prayers, just as we are holding you in our prayers as well. Take care, God bless, and until next time, I am with you, Christ is with you, and do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs>